Carry on Blitzkrieg, get right in your tits creek. On and on Blitzkrieg, we're right at the shit's creek. Hitler felt a strange and immediate attachment to Munich, a city that held the world record for the number of political parties. Hitler almost joined the largest and most active of these groups, the Don't Knows of the apathetic, slightly left of centre right party. Hitler also described his excitement at the city's obsession with parades. People paraded to work, paraded home, paraded for peace, then rushed to join parades for war and neutrality. In one instance, Hitler witnessed the march where the head met the tail. Confused citizens circled the city centre for a week until exhaustion forced an end. But as soon as he settled, war came. The war had been originally set for 1912, but was postponed after the official sponsors pulled out in disagreement over the placement and size of their logo on equipment and uniforms. On August the 1st, 1914, World War I finally got underway, but nobody in Munich noticed, because that same day the first McDonald's opened in Bavaria. Here we see Hitler in the queue for fries. Encouraged by the hysteria, Pizza Hut opened the next day, but was met with indifference. Hitler served during the Great War as a waiter. Although he later joined the army, he never suppressed the compulsion to carry an imaginary tray of drinks whenever he saw a crowd. The Great War had complex roots that go back to the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Years later, the rock group Franz Ferdinand took their name from this incident. Luckily for them, the killer missed his intended target. Count Krabi can't play for Wank Band. After the killing, Austria mobilised against Serbia, Russia mobilised against Austria, Germany mobilised against Russia, France mobilised against Germany, and the Dutch declared war on themselves to save Germany the bother. The Italians crapped themselves and waited to see who was winning, but finally declared war on a very surprised Brian Smith of Festive Road, Croydon. Brian was a paraplegic. He had trouble breathing, let alone operating a machine gun. When Brian turned up in Rome to sort out the misunderstanding, in what was believed to be an armoured car, Italy surrendered unconditionally. It later transpired that the armoured car was Brian's wheelchair. Now the Italian army was all dressed up with no war to go to. They declared war on an uninhabited island in the Caribbean. Again, the plan backfired, when the first division ashore capitulated to a small but agitated hermit crab. Encouraged by reports from prisoners, and the island's excellent climate, troops kept landing until the whole of Italy's armed forces was spending the war basking in the sun. Faced with mounting casualties, the German High Command found it difficult to raise volunteers for such campaigns as Operation Suicide and Operation Bloody Massacre. They tried softening the names, but the response to Operation Lacy Curtains and Flower Pressing were disappointing. A change of tactic produced spectacular results when the general asked troops to sign for Operation Gangbang. Four entire divisions volunteered, including one from the enemy's side. The general staff had uncovered a war-winning idea. It was a lesson Hitler was never to forget. Hitler joined the army by mistake, believing he was standing in a queue for bread. At the front, he was a dispatch runner, taking messages to HQ. It was a dangerous post. So Hitler hailed taxis and took the bus with regular stop-offs for weekends in Antwerp. When HQ realised messages were taking several weeks, Hitler switched to using first-class post, but the messages took even longer to arrive. Finally, he was ordered to take the messages himself. On his first day, he was injured 67 times, and comrades began calling him Lucky. The legend of his invulnerability spread after a shell landed on the same spot Hitler had been standing at only 12 weeks earlier. In August 1918 his luck ran out. He was shot, gassed, blinded by an explosion, stumbled into a heap of rusty bayonets and received a very nasty paper cut. While convalescing in hospital he was shot in the chin when a gunfight broke out over hospital food. It was here that he heard the crushing news. Germany had surrendered. I never felt so utterly oppressed, so mentally and emotionally shattered. And the tea was far too milky. 
Weeks in hospital, facing unbearable mental anguish and excruciating pain, he described as The happiest time of my life. When Germany lost the First World War, Hitler was broken. He believed in Germany's superiority. He believed in the nation's ability to lose a war more spectacularly than any other nation in history, with greater casualties and civilian losses. He would make this dream his life's goal. Back in Munich, Hitler became a spy, rooting out threats to the young democracy. In 1919, he was assigned to the German Workers' Party. Inflamed by the decadence creeping into German society, Hitler gave a four-hour speech simply asking for the pepper pot. He then stunned everybody by taking over the tea urn and insisting apple strudel would not be served until everyone had proven Aryan ancestry back to their grandparents. An old associate speaks of that historic meeting. Back then, his ideas were only partially formed. While waiting for dessert, he made us do a variation on Chaplin's comedy walk that he called the Goslin Step. The rest of the evening was spent designing and making paramilitary uniforms. When he left, we all agreed that Hitler knew how to throw a good party. The week after, we formed a committee and called ourselves the Nancy Party. Hitler always claimed that he thought he was joining the Entertainments Committee of the Young Bavarian Artists Association, a fact reinforced when at the first Nazi Party National Conference he gave a young David Formby his first foreign gig. It was during the party's formative years that Hitler discovered he could easily sway the masses. With hypnotism. Look into my moustache. You are getting sleepy. Sleepy. And when I count down to one, you will awake and be a rabbit racist. Hitler naturally meant rabid racists. But an ill-fitting set of dentures unleashed a hostile Germany upon the nation's rabbit population. During Crystal Hatchen Act, mobs smashed in rabbit hatches and forced rabbits to wear yellow carrot patches. In 1924, with his power spreading within Bavaria, Hitler felt the time had come to stage an armed coup or a pooch. Yet again, the curse of the ill-fitting dentures interfered with history. On Christmas morning, the Nancy party presented Hitler with a gift of a dog. Furious, Hitler demanded a real pooch. As they marched into town, the police arrested Hitler for owning a dog without a license. Hitler refused trial by jury, despite his lawyer's attempt to clear the misunderstanding. How will 12 rabbis give me a fair hearing when I've been blaming the jury for all of Germany's ills? At the trial, the judges who were sympathetic to the Nancy cause gave him a nine-month suspended sentence. Hitler was livid. His party stood on a policy of tough justice and he demanded he received a three-year custodial sentence. When Hitler finally came to power, he had the judges shot for their leniency. To diffuse rumours of sexual repression within the Nancy party, Hitler spent his time in prison writing his autobiography. The plan backfired when copies of I'm Camp, hit the bookstores. He later blamed the title on his hard of hearing publisher. Curiously, in I'm Camp, Hitler traces his hatred of the Jews back to the time he joined an Umpa band and chipped a tooth while playing the Jew's harp. So what did make Hitler so evil? Was it his genocidal tendencies? No, 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 my boy, it's really quite simple. He was a vegan. He plunged the world into war and killed millions of innocent people just because he was a vegan? Well, yes. It's really quite simple. Uh, it's the devil's diet. My ex-wife was one, too. A mass murderer? No, a vegan. And she's a bloody Nazi. What more proof do you need, eh? Hmm. Next week, we chart Hitler's rise to power and get an Alsatian, a bulldog and a cockerel to reenact Dunkirk. Hitler shot some rages, I've heard him run to land. But the dirty work of genocide he leaves to his commandant. A rival politician once said he looked quite odd. Hitler laughed and then he called off for the fighting squad. Carry on Blitzkrieg, get right in your titch creek. 
On and on Blitzkrieg. 